Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Luke with uh, Learning with Luke. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, 3D scanning and 3D printing. We're gonna look at a couple of different parts and we're gonna take a look at how Simon's scanning a part. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in that, all right? Thanks. Hey Simon, what are you doing today? Hey Luke, today I'm taking this Origin 1 build head. This is the surface on which the Origin 3D printer from Stratasys makes prints. And I'm going to be scanning it with a Creaform AndyScan Black Elite so that I can reverse engineer it and develop an attachment to hold the build head steady while I'm taking parts off and cleaning the build head. That's awesome. So, here's our AndyScan Black Elite. And using the button pad on the back of the machine, I'm going to start scanning. And I'm just zooming in so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better, changing our exposure settings. So we start to get a little bit better definition. And as long as this build head doesn't move relative to the targets, the positioning targets that are surrounding it, the scanner will know where it is in space and the software will be able to stitch multiple scans together so that I can scan both the top surface and the bottom surface. Man, that was fast. It's of the fastest handheld scanners that we have. So you can see on my screen, there's a lot of uh, artifacts and debris that were brought in during the scan. My hands show up, the turntable shows up. So before I do my second scan, I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup. Man, is that hard or no? One click, two click, three click, four click. Oh, wow. And there's still some floaters in the air, so real quick, I'm going to delete everything except for that main body. So wow. now looking at that scan, I'm seeing that there might have been a couple of areas that I missed, like down into that threaded hole. Mm -hmm. And there are some shiny surfaces on these bearings that seem to have uh, not scanned as well as I want them to. So, I have this spray called ASEB. It's meant specifically for 3D scanning. And I'm just going to apply a little bit to that top surface and down into that hole. What's cool about ASEB spray is it goes on, clearly it's like a, a powder. It looks like a powder when it sprays onto the object that you're scanning. Mm -hmm. But over a couple of hours, it sublimates off into the air. So there's no cleanup involved. It kind of does it all for you. That's awesome, man. So I'm just going to restart our scan without generating a new scan. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit better. And you're seeing kind of a rendering preview, which is why it's as, as chalky looking or as we'll call it pixelated as it is. Mm -hmm. But once we're done with the scan, we'll be able to have a better idea of the definition that the scanner was able to pick up. So if somebody didn't have a CAD data for their part and they needed it, you can do that with the 3D scanner as well, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Perfect. Inspections, that kind of stuff also to kind of see how different a part is from the manufacturer's part. Yep. So there's a piece of software called VX Inspect where we can actually apply the scan data that we just took to the CAD file that was used to make the build head uh, and it, it can measure all those deviations for you. That's pretty awesome, man. So I did pretty well getting down into that hole. The scanner, especially when threads are kind of obscured by the depth of the hole, can be a little bit harder for, uh, for the scanner to see what we're doing. Um, but within the software, I can at the very least find the center point of that circle. And in CAD, I can then make the threads more accurate. That's pretty awesome, man. So I'm going to finish up this scan. Again, I'm going to clean it off a little bit. Delete everything that's floating in the air. And here's where the magic starts to happen. I'm going to make a new scan. And I'm telling the software, hey, copy the cutoff plane or clipping plane that I put on the top of this turntable so that mm -hmm. you don't get all of that surface scan. I also told it, hey, I didn't make any changes to these targets, so you can reuse those and we'll make the scan even faster. Okay, wow. So I'm picking up my build head, flipping it over, and go ahead and scan this side. I love how fast that thing is just picking up the data. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. I, I've, I've seen other scanners 
before this, and uh, I gotta admit, it wasn't that fast for the screen. So, that's actually pretty impressive. As long as the scanner is able to see five of those targets at any given moment, it's gonna be able to pick up geometry. That's pretty awesome. And I'm getting some real-time feedback on the screen telling me if I'm too close or too far away. Because just like a camera that you might have at home, there is a focal distance on this, uh, on this scanner. Okay, I didn't know that. There's still some surfaces in there that are having a little bit of trouble getting picked up, so it could be a situation where I'm gonna wanna scan the other side as well. Let's see how much I can just get. Scan. You just flip it over. Yep. So in between flips, you don't have to do anything special. Absolutely nothing. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm still shocked how fast it grabs the data, man. Seriously, like all the geometries. Like I said, that's one of the characteristics of this scanner, the Handy Scan Black Elite. But even the more entry-level models from Creaform scan exceptionally fast. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, that's impressive. Sometimes we get asked, hey, you know, did it, does the ambient light in the room matter uh, in terms of scan acquisition? Like, if we had something outdoors that we wanted to scan, mm -hmm. do we have to make any special considerations because of, like, bright sunlight? And the answer is no. Oh, seriously? Yep. With this laser scanner, that is not something that you need to worry about. I was expecting you to say yes. <laughs> in fact, one of the, the really cool applications for a scanner like this would be inspecting objects that are outdoors, uh, that are too big to bring into your facility to put on a CNN table. Oh, nice. All right, so. So now you're going to what, bring in all three scans or what? I'm going to do some alignment to get them pretty close to one another. My burden is going to be to get them pretty close so that I can select common areas. Do you have to get them like exact or something? You got to get them close, but what will happen because of the uniqueness of this geometry, once we get it close, like that's going to be close enough, all I have to do is say best fit, and the software is going to evaluate the geometry and line the two of them up to one another. That's actually pretty, pretty awesome. So we can click OK that. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do the same alignment with our third scan. And we should be able to zoom in a little on that. So same idea. So you're just grabbing points. Just grabbing points. And again, they don't have to be perfect. But you'll need at least three of them. They are all aligned to one another. You can see we've got a nice continuous model. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit accept. So the different colors, that's just basically showing the different scans. Correct. It's, it's nothing as far as like a color map or anything like that, right? That is correct. Yep. All right. We're just showing the three different scans that are now being added together. All right. We're looking pretty good. I can still see a couple of holes, like in this area. It looks like I missed these uh, missed these points during the scan, but that's that's nothing that's going to interfere with the reverse engineering that I'm going to be doing. 
Okay. But within the software, I have the ability to do some cleanup to the mesh that I just scanned uh, in a module called VX Model. And that's going to give me tools like hole filling, where it'll identify holes in the mesh. Oh, and automatically? Oh, no way. And I can select those holes. It's going to depend on where those holes are and the features across which those holes are, uh, are living. But once we have filled those in and we have a watertight mesh, if all you need to do is 3D print this, we'll export it as an STL and you can toss that right into GrabCAD, print okay. it on any of our printers. That's pretty awesome. But we're just going to make sure that everything is nice and cleaned up. So I'm going to tell it, hey, let's go ahead and fill all the holes. So now we've got a completely watertight model. There's still a little crunchiness, um, some artifacts from the scanning that I can also clean up using the clean mesh, mesh functionality. So this is basically a click of the button? Click of the button. Even somebody like me can do it. <laughs> you mean somebody like me. <laughs> right, somebody like Luke. <laughs> Learning with Luke. Uh, I have, yeah, I, 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 you know, that, that simplifies a lot of things. That actually looks like a nice clean model. So cool. it was a click of a button. There was no manual process where you had to go in and clean stuff up, nope. as you guys all saw. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome, seriously. Yeah. And, and like I said, at this point, we've generated a mesh. It can be saved as an STL. There's no CAD data applied to it. There's a, a, a wealth of functionality within the X model where we can extract entities that can then communicate directly to your CAD software, like SolidWorks, uh, that you can then use to develop a, a parametric-based uh, CAD model. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much, Simon. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to talk to us. I got you guys. All right. See ya. As you can see, we can also do Twinkies. All right, this is a 3D printed Twinkie. We, we 3D printed that. Uh, the bananas 3D printed. Pizza slice with a, with a agilis rubber-like material uh, that kind of gives you that real feel. Um, so the reason I'm showing you guys the, the, the food and that kind of stuff, if you, if you think about it, um, you know, s companies put out fo food for, for display, right? Um, and then they have to throw it out. Why not 3D scan it, 3D print it, and then have it on display instead of, you know, throwing all that food out or throw, throwing away the, the products that you display, right? Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. If it's not always just for automotive, it's not just for, you know, uh, form, fit, and function. You can 3D print stuff so you can kind of display it um, on your displays, right? And we have a lot of customers that are starting to do that. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some 3D scanning and what we can do. All right. All right. So thanks for joining uh, another session with uh, Learning with Luke. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, yes, Simon is great at what he does. Um, we have a lot of application engineers that do this for us, so we do have a scanning services. If you ever need uh, anything scanned because you need parts, um, CAD data for the parts that you, you, uh, you don't have the CAD data for, or just like in this situation where we wanted to find out where the uh, location was for the mounting of the, the printer head. So reach out to us at uh, buildpart at cati.com or visit our website. Um, see you guys next time.